Make sure your drill is on forward and start spinning. God, I hope it's not mud. If so, we've got a break. This video is sponsored by Ferguson. We've teamed up with Ferguson because we feel they are really doing a lot of things to help the community and the industry and help us all get better. So if you wanna learn more about Ferguson, go to ferguson.com. The link is down in the description. The rigid flex shaft drain cleaning machine may be the best drain cleaning machine there is. Now you've used sewer machines, but that's all they do. They unclog the sewer. This actually cleans the inside of the drain like nothing I've seen before. Now I'm gonna show you today how to use it, but you need to hang around till later to find out how to set your chains for the right size pipe. So let's check this out. Okay, today we're cleaning a drain on a two-way clean out. Now what's cool about it, this machine actually cleans the inside of the drain. So come on in here with me and let's check this out. Today we've got the rigid K9204, the K9, big dog. This is the bigger one. So this one is for actually two to four inch drains. Now they do have the smaller one, K9102, four inch and a quarter to two inch drains. Now we've got the larger one because most of the drains we wanna clean are mains but we do have the smaller chains so we can go down into smaller drains. What I like about this, number one, the plumber himself is protected. You've got a sheath around the cable. So this is what you're dealing with and it does not spin. Now the really cool thing about it is when you put the camera in, you can literally put a camera in right up next to it and you're not gonna damage your camera. Now think about it, your sewer machine is continuously slamming around and with that expensive camera head, you would not want anything like that slamming up against it. The people at Rigid have thought about a way to get a sewer machine, a cable, a drain cleaning machine down in there and you can actually watch and see how clean is it getting. Now this is the chain head. They actually have a chain head with carbide blades on it to actually scrape the inside scale off the pipe. This is really a pretty cool tool and I really do like it. Now, if you'll hang around to the end, I'll show you how we know what size length to put on here, what chain to put on, and how to set everything. You see, we've got a bushing right here. And as you notice, this goes all the way up to the very end. So I'm gonna reach in here and pull the clean out cover off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually stick this thing in until I hit a clog or until I hit a rough area, something like that, something that's creating a blockage. And I'm gonna get the chain to go through it and make a hole in it because I really want water flowing past it. Now, I know sometimes you can't do that, but you wanna at least try to go through your blockage. That way, when you turn it on, it's cleaning everything. There's a hole there for the water to flow through. You can actually turn water on on the back side, and anything you start breaking up, it'll start pushing out through the drain. But what I wanna do is I don't wanna pull this out with the cable spinning. So I'm gonna stick it down in there about a foot or two. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my pen or a Sharpie or even a piece of tape. But what I wanna do is I wanna put a mark on it right here. That way I know that whenever I'm pulling this out, when I get to this point, I really want to make sure I don't have anything spinning or going crazy because I don't wanna come out and create any damage. Especially if I'm working inside of a house, inside of a restaurant, maybe a floor drain, anything at all like that, I wanna make sure I'm not creating a mess and I don't wanna just pull that out and have those chains spinning around everywhere. So I've got it stuck in, I've got it marked right here. So now we're gonna go ahead and push it all the way in. Now this is really easy because I can just push in about a foot at a time. I got it right here. You wanna make sure you keep your machine within about three feet because you're gonna be controlling the drill motor. And when I say drill motor, I, on this I mean a cordless. You don't want anything corded because you don't want any kind of an electrical connection there. But you're gonna get this in until you feel your blockage, okay? Once you feel your blockage, you're gonna push through it. Now the tip of this is kind of pointed, so you're gonna be able to get through it, but once you get there and get everything set the way you want it, now is when you're gonna hook up your drill. So what I'm gonna do first is take off the battery because when I hook this thing up, I wanna make sure that I don't accidentally get it spinning before I'm ready for it. Now the other thing is on the clutch, you don't wanna set it at drill. You wanna set it to the strongest setting before drill. And you also wanna beat it up a little bit. Now, the reason I want everything like this is you want that clutch to kick in. You don't want it to jam. You don't want your chains to lock up and you keep applying pressure here on it spinning. What that is gonna do, it's gonna create your cable to kink or lock up or something like that. You don't wanna create any undue stress that you don't have to. So now, we're gonna put our battery back in. We are ready to go. Now, you also wanna make sure that 
the person controlling the drill is the same person holding onto the snake here, guiding it in, guiding it out. Make sure you've got everything set up to where you can be both people and take care of things all by yourself. So once we get everything in position, literally make sure your drill is on forward and start spinning. Now you see that the sheath is not spinning at all. The only thing spinning is the head down inside. You can feel it vibrating down here, but look at this, nothing's moving. This is great to use indoors. This is great to use on a roof. There's a lot of different things you can do. Now, since remember, I've gone in past my brake, so what I'm gonna do while I have it spinning is pull back on it. And that way I'm pulling it back through the breakage. Now remember, if I've gone all the way through this, I've poked a hole in it to where when I've got water running on the inside, water's flowing past it. So anything that I break up, it's gonna wash out. It's gonna wash it down into the city main. That way it can go to the treatment center. Okay, now we think that we've got it good and clean in there. We hit the rough spot, we went through it, we turned the water on, we've got everything flowing so we know that water's flowing good now, we can actually hear it. What we're trying to do now, we wanna get the machine out and we wanna get it out and keep it clean. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off my drill motor. The reason being is I don't wanna accidentally hit it, turn it on, but also I want the other hand to clean up the sheath as I pull it in because it's been down in the sewer pipe. So what I'm gonna do literally is wash it and pull it wash it and pull it. Now the reason being, I can keep the inside of this drum clean and dry by pulling it back in this way. And the neat thing is while I'm pulling and watching, remember I'm looking for my mark that I put on it. Now you see here, you see that we had some buildup and stuff like that. That's what we got out of the inside of it. That's what we broke loose from the inside of the wall. Now. There's my mark, so I know that when I see this mark, my chain knocker is just down inside the top of the two-way cleanouts. So I'm gonna keep cleaning right here. Now I could have kept this thing spinning all the way in if I wanted to, but I knew that we only had a little bit of problem on the inside. And as you can see, that's grease. Gotta hope it's not mud. If so, we've got a break. No, that's grease, that sewage, that's the thing that we come in and clean out of drains all the time. But this actually breaks it loose from the inside wall of the pipe. Once I get down into here, I wanna make very careful to clean my cable. I wanna make sure that I don't have any gunk on it or anything like that, because I want this cable to last a long time. This did good for me today. And you know, I want y'all to think about it this way. This is something that you can use as a sewer machine or even as a cleaning option. The chain knocker literally scrubs the inside of the pipe as it goes around. So any grease, any sewage, anything at all that could be built up and caught up, maybe some old toilet paper, maybe soft stoppages, anything like that, this is gonna clear those up really good. And if you turn on the water inside and let everything flow, it will literally wash it down really, really well. So guys, last week we went out with the rigid flex shaft. Now this is a drain cleaning machine. This is the Rigid Flex Shaft K9204. Now they make the smaller one, the K9102, but we wanted the big one because we deal with mainly larger drains. I see the benefits of both. So I told you earlier I'd show you how to figure out what size chain you needed and what type of adjustment on it. Number one, the bag they give you, you've got a lot of cool stuff in it. You've got multiple chains, you've got spacers, and they send you additional, but what we've done is we've pre-cut what we know that we need. So you've got your little bushing and your bushing goes on first. And once you get your bushing on, now you need to know what size you're going. Now we've got three pre-cut pieces for our large cable. So we know that the short one is for two inch, the medium one's for three inch, and the longest one is for four inch. So we've got our bushing. We know what size chain knockers we wanna go on and we know what size bushings to get for two, three, and four. So what you do is you put your bushing on Make sure you get your tools. Now we like to keep ours bagged up just because you never know what's touched what and what's been where. But you take one of your Allen wrenches out, make sure you've got the right size, and line your chain up. You wanna make sure it's straight and not twisted. Slide it down in position. Take the right knocker extender, the right bushing, and then your other piece, and slide it over the end. 
Now the first thing you want to remember is this end piece needs to be flush. So I talked about that earlier, but you literally want to make sure your chain knocker, when you put this on and clamp it down, the end of it is flush right there at the end of your cable. Then you slide your knocker up to it, slide the other end up, and I like to make sure mine are straight. That way I know that the chains are facing the same direction. They're all lined up right where they're supposed to be. Snug up the back side of it. Make sure all your Allen screws are snugged in and everything looks good. I wanna say thanks to the folks at Rigid. Now, those of y'all that watched the whole video, you know I didn't have my safety glasses on when I ran this. We always recommend wearing all your correct PPE. Now, I didn't have mine when we went out to video it, but I knew by playing with this machine before, I was gonna be able to do it safely and not have any problems. So I wanna say thank you to the people at Rigid and thank you to Ferguson.com again for sponsoring this video. Any tools like this or any tools in general that you're interested in, check out Ferguson.com. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.